This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. More later in the video. Does flocking your telescope, or in my case, my dew shield, actually work? We're gonna test this in this video. If you're not aware of what uh, flocking is, you'll learn that very soon. Stay tuned. I recently 3D printed a dew shield for my telescope that I can just put on the scope and forget about. And it's a great, great dew shield. There's tons of cool functionality. There's a little uh, drawer hidden so I can access my filter uh, without removing the dew shield, that kind of stuff. But the big problem is because I 3D printed it, and you can see it is super reflective of light. And it's the same on the inside as well. You can see the inside is super reflective. And internal reflections are terrible for telescopes. This is because there's tons of light that can make it into your telescope. There is, of course, starlight. Uh, there's also moonlight. There's lights from the city. There's light pollution from the clouds. There's tons of ways that light can enter into your system. And if you have very reflective surfaces like this surface here, then the light can get just reflected across and end up making its way to your camera sensor. And that can cause all sorts of artifacts. And it's much worse when you have a high speed system like this one, which is an F2 uh, focal ratio. So it really is super sensitive to such reflections. So I need to do something about it. And this is why I bought felt paper or flocking paper. And of course, I'll put links in the description if you're interested in buying that as well. And if you look at forums uh, about telescopes, you'll very often see people talking about flocking their telescopes. And flocking their telescopes means not just a dew shield, but they're going to put this kind of felt paper that is very non-reflective all over, including inside the telescope. At this stage, I will not do that, especially since I just collimated my uh, telescope almost to perfection. But you have instances where people will remove like the primary mirror or re remove the spider vane if it's like a Newtonian. And then inside the tube of the telescope, they will line it with this felt paper, which by the way, is adhesive on the back, on the back side. So it's very easy to apply and it's awesome. And you have astrophotography specific flocking paper that's available from stores. Mine I just bought on Amazon felt paper and I'm sure it will work just as well without the astrophotography tax. Again, links in the description. My weapons to apply this are the paper. It came with tons of sheets of paper and I think it was something like $8. So definitely not bad. And my secondary weapon is scissors. <laughs> And then that's all I'm going to use to, for the moment, flock the inside of the dew shield. Now, I will, of course, have before and after results because I noticed on uh, one of my images of the uh, Leo triplet that I had huge halo across the whole image and it coincides with me having this new dew shield. So my guess is that it is somewhat related. And I so happened to yesterday have taken an image of uh, M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, and uh, I'll be able to compare if there is any impact by flocking my dew shield or not, because I plan on taking another image of the M51 Galaxy tonight, if the weather allows. Otherwise, it will be later. <laughs> So flocking is really quite simple. You just determine the areas that you need to flock, the ones that are actually exposed within the telescope and not hidden by other areas. And then you cut your paper to, to size and apply it. This is what I'm gonna do. And of course, if you're going to actually do it inside, well, you can of course remove the corrector plate and uh, just remember the angle of the corrector plate so you can put it back at the same angle and then flock inside. It's just the same system. Within the telescope as well, near the primary mirror, you can see a dark tube, and this is the baffle tube, which can also be a source of reflection. So a lot of people will actually remove all of that, flock the actually inside of the tube, but also the outside of the baffle tube. Uh, it can get quite involved, and I'm just not going to avoid doing that for now. So let me quickly do that on my dew shield, and I'll show you how it looks like after the flocking. And I am done. And like with all arts and crafts kind of projects, because this is really an arts and craft project and nothing more, nothing less. Uh, I, I am absolutely terrible at them, but I did manage something and I ended up with a lot of garbage, which is normal, that's how things are. Now, honestly, playing with adhesive paper uh, close to my primary mirror is not something that I'd ever want to do. 
So this is not something that I would recommend uh, unless you're really, really sure-handed and you know what you're doing. I'm not gonna dare do that, except if I see that I really keep having terrible, terrible reflections. This is currently the result. You can see that the inside of the tube is no longer shiny. The outside, super shiny. The inside is much more matte than it used to be. I wasn't able to cover everything. And also the, uh, the drawer that I have to change the filters is now is now a, a little bit tougher to to slide in and out, but I've uh, because I because I've added some thickness onto it with the with the felt, and the felt is actually quite soft and smooth. It's very pleasant to the touch. But now that I have that, I can simply place back this uh, lens hood, and here we are, and it is indeed much darker than it used to be inside the telescope, like a pit of blackness. This is so much better than it used to be. Oh my gosh. So I have high hopes for this. Even the way the sound of my voice echoes from the tube is different. <laughs> this is kind of weird. So with that, I am going to image tonight and I will see you tomorrow with the results comparing the before and after flocking at least my dew shield. So we see how effective it is. So see you then. So I ended up with two sets of data, one for the first night before I flocked the dew shield and one from the second night after I flocked the dew shield. And the conditions are more or less comparable, except that they were worse for the second night. The moon was a bit fuller for the second night, so the, the illumination was even worse and uh, the weather was not as good for the second night. So I had to restrict myself to try to compare apples to apples to 45 minutes of clear skies during the second night to compare to 45 minutes of clear skies during the first night. I also made sure that I took my flat frames again for both nights because I take my flat frames with the dew shield on the telescope and so on the first night the flat frames likely had some reflections going on in the dew shield with light bouncing around whereas in the second night the uh, flocking hopefully contained that a little bit so I wanted to make sure that you know everything was comparable like each night has had its set of flat frames as well and currently they are all being uh, <laughs> stacked on my computer and while I'm waiting for for the stacking to be over, I like to brush up on skills that can be useful for astrophotography, like statistics, which are being used by the stacking process right now, or things like trigonometry, since we have arc angles and distances like that. And like many in the hobby, I love learning new stuff. And you know what? I think brilliant.org is the best way to learn math and computer science interactively. Brilliant provides uh, lessons with a great progress path and the lessons are they're bite sized. They're very interactive and at the same time, they're really, really well explained. So they are very effective to learn new stuff. And they're also really good to fill in those small free gaps during the day or during the commute or here while I'm stacking and processing images. And, you know, it feels so productive and rewarding. And for a geek like me, it's absolutely perfect. It's really good for keeping my brain in shape and, and really staying sharp. And the amount of lessons and the topics that Brilliant covers is mind boggling. There's lessons from gravitational physics, which is what I want to learn next, actually, to calculus, to the lesson that I'm on right now, which is uh, polar, polar coordinates part of the larger trigonometry course. And so many more courses are added on a monthly basis. So if, like me, you want to use Brilliant, well, you can try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days. And to do so, you can visit brilliant.org slash quivlazygeek or click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Okay, now that we're done with the stacking and with the studying, I have the two resulting images on my screen right now. On the left-hand side, we have the flocked image. And on the right-hand side, we have the unflocked image. Uh, again, taken under similar conditions as much as possible. Although the flocked image, even though I try to restrict to perfectly clear skies, had a bit of like smogginess in the air compared to the uh, unflocked image. So far now, I've just applied a, an unlink uh, screen stretch function on them. And we can already see like this kind of two lines of reflection on the unflocked dew shield, as well as I can really clearly see some kind of ringish pattern here.
there is something here in the corner as well. I do believe it's a reflection as well, but the ringish pattern is much less visible. Let's try to apply an automatic background extraction to those two images. So that's with an automatic background extraction. We can see we have two lines of reflection still very visible on the right-hand right side, so on the unflocked version. And on the flocked version, I have a single line. On the unflocked, as I was mentioning, we seem to have this kind of uh, ring here that is uh, visible, whereas we don't really have it on the flocked version. The flocked version has like brighter areas and more gradients, but I do believe it comes down to the smog and the fact that the weather was not as good for the uh, flocked version compared to the unflocked version. Okay, but I wanted to see what happens if I do my best with dynamic background extraction to see uh, what the results are flocked versus unflocked. And this is what I ended up with. Uh, so you can see the uh, flocked version isn't perfect. Uh, we still see the reflections on the right hand side. There's a, a small line here as well, but it is better than the unflogged version, despite being taken under worse conditions. So you can see the ring that we have with the uh, unflogged version is even more visible compared to the uh, flogged version. And yeah, overall, the flogged version looks flatter and easier to process than the right one on the right. Is it a huge, huge difference? Well, no, but still, anything that makes the processing faster or, or easier is better, right? So I really like what I'm seeing. And for the cost of like $8 and, and a, a 10 minutes arts and craft kind of project, it really makes sense. Now, I do feel like I could do better. Maybe I should flog the camera, but then because it's like, in, for me, it's in front of the optical path. And it's very reflective because it's it's shiny metal. Uh, but I'm worried then about the heat dis dissipation of the uh, of the Peltier cooling system that is in the camera. So I probably will not do that. But I think that would be very effective. I could also print in black the uh, the knob. There's a small aluminum knob of the filter drawer that I have that is very shiny as well, and I'm sure it's very bad for reflections. And of course, I could try to flock the inside of my uh, SCT tube of my Hyperstar telescope, the Celestrum C6 telescope tube, by removing the corrector plate and then doing it inside. But honestly, after doing the uh, Arts and Crafts project just on the dew shield, uh, playing with self-adhesive ta tape inside the tube doesn't strike me as the thing that I want to do uh, a lot without knowing for sure that I would get much, much better results, which I don't think would be the case. And uh, and the, you can see that I got like a significant improvement with the flocking. So yes, to answer the topic of the video, yes, it does work. Awesome. And the, the, the improvement is actually significant. But right, I do believe that if I tried to flock the inside of the telescope tube, um, I would get only gradual improvements compared to the major improvement that I'm seeing right now. This might be different and actually probably would be different for a Newtonian telescope uh, unless you use a dew shield on the Newtonian telescope. Because while the primary mi mirror of a Newtonian telescope, just like a schmidt cassegrain is hidden away safely at the bottom, uh, the secondary mirror of the uh, Newtonian is really exposed to the, uh, to the elements unless you have a, a dew shield on top compared to a schmidt cassegrain telescope where the secondary, uh, secondary mirror is kind of well hidden within a, a tube attached to the corrector plate. And it's also well hidden behind like a, a longer dew shield outside of the telescope. So what are your thoughts on this? If you've done the flocking of a telescope before, could you let me know how you did it? Did you use like kind of flocking paper like I did? Or did you like paint with some dark paint? Uh, how did how did you do it? And do you think it's fine for me to like flock my camera as well as long as I leave the vents uh, open for the, uh, the the cooling element for to dissipate the heat that it uh, emits? And if you flock like the inside of your telescope, how effective has it been? Please let us know down in the comments below on your way there. Just like before, you like the video, you subscribe and you tell YouTube that this is an interesting video and it really helps the channel out. Thank you so much. Of course, if you're feeling generous, there's also channel membership and Patreon. You guys make the channel possible. Thank you so much.
Any suggestions will be welcome. But with that, this is the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.